Road cleaning machines from Kybeck AS combine modern technology and user-friendly design to deliver impressive performance. These machines allow large surfaces to be cleaned quickly and effectively, achieving excellent results on a variety of floor types. Thanks to their powerful engines, road cleaning machines can easily remove stubborn dirt, leaves, and other debris. Thanks to its innovative head, this modern road cleaning machine can easily cut the grass above the running water on the roadside. With its high maneuverability and precise cutting features, it provides effective cleaning even in difficult areas. It plays an important role in protecting the safety and aesthetics of roads by quickly clearing the vegetation accumulated on the roadsides. Hitachi Roadside Cleaning Machine is the perfect solution for cleaning and maintenance of roadsides with its modern technology. This powerful machine can effortlessly cut grass and other vegetation from roadside puddles thanks to its specially designed cleaning head. Working asphalt milling machines are one of the most effective solutions in road construction and maintenance. These machines prepare a smooth surface for new asphalt paving by scraping old and worn asphalt with millimetric precision. Thanks to its high-performance milling drums, it can engrave at different depths and make the desired corrections on the surface. This invention quickly removes old asphalt or road fills, preparing the perfect ground for laying new material, thus making road maintenance more efficient. Road line deletion equipment is equipped with modern machines designed to remove old or damaged road lines quickly and effectively. These equipment remove streaking paint from asphalt or concrete surfaces using high-pressure water jets, milling, or sanding.
HEMA's roadside milling machine is an effective solution designed to efficiently maintain roadsides and narrow areas. It contributes to making roads safer and more durable by providing speed and efficiency in road maintenance projects. This machine is equipped with water spray heads and brushes and can wash and brush at the same time. It increases the safety of roads and ensures driving comfort, especially in rainy seasons and heavy traffic areas. Road water cleaning machine is the ideal solution for fast and efficient cleaning. ADA Orbiter Road Machine is a multifunctional vehicle used in road maintenance and cleaning. This machine performs operations quickly and effectively, especially scraping, sweeping, and cleaning asphalt and concrete surfaces. Thanks to its high maneuverability and powerful engine, it offers superior performance even in narrow spaces and difficult conditions. Designed to clean melioration ditches, the Comich is a machine that revolutionizes the maintenance of melioration systems. The main task of this combination is to effectively remove sediment, dirt, and excess vegetation from ditches. This is critical for water flow and flood prevention. Weighing 580 tons, 91.8 meters, 301 feet, long, 7.4 meters wide and 9 meters high, this machine builds bridges in a way we've never seen before. When fully extended with the runway and at that point it reaches another bridge tower SLJ 900-32 lowers the new bridge segment into place for the construction team to begin work. When this new segment becomes safe, the process can be repeated. SLJ 900-32 is a supplier of customized heavy-duty lifting and handling machinery Beijing Wow Joint Machinery Company it has a Chinese design by.
Lanzhou, March 3rd, Xinhua, the sky clears as the sun rises over the vast Gobi Desert. Like sunflowers, 12,000 mirrors, each covering 115 square meters, are arranged in concentric circles, concentrating tens of thousands of beams of sunlight onto the central heat absorption tower. This is China's largest molten salt solar thermal power station, located in Dunhuang City, northwest China's Gansu province, an area with rich solar energy resources. At the top of the 260-meter high tower, the heat absorber accumulates energy to heat up molten salt flowing inside. The molten salt then generates high temperature and high pressure steam, which drives a steam turbine generator to generate electricity. A Chinese city in the Bitcoin mining hub of the world is encouraging its blockchain industry to help consume excess hydropower ahead of the summer rainy season. Ya, one of many cities in China's mountainous Sichuan province, a region where the Bitcoin network is estimated to account for more than 50% of its computing power, and recently published a public guide, probably the first, to seize the strategic opportunity. The blockchain industry so they can help deplete the region's excess hydropower. The increase in hydropower generation in China this year, supported by record-breaking rains, is helping the world's biggest polluter meet green targets, while also reducing imports of liquefied natural gas amid tight global supplies. Hydropower in May production set a record for this period, with an annual increase of 27% to 121.7 billion kilowatt-hours (kWh). Wuhan Yangtze River Tunnel is the first tunnel under the Yangtze River. The tunnel connects Hanko and Wuchang districts in the city of Wuhan. It takes about 7 minutes to cross the Yangtze River by car using the tunnel. The sixth ceremony of China Grand Awards for Industry was held in Beijing on December 27, 2020. China Railway Engineering Equipment Group CREG, under China Railway Group Limited CREC, won a prize while China Railway Science and Industry Group CRSIC, also under CREC, won an honor award for its complete construction set of 1,000-ton high-speed rail box girder. Approved by the State Council, the China Grand Awards for Industry is the highest award for the industrial circle in China, dubbed the Oscars of Chinese Industry. The biennial top prize honors companies and projects that represent the highest level of the development of the Chinese industry. Craig is a comprehensive group that focuses on underground equipment services as the leading business for its diversified development, and specializes in the production of tunnel boring machines and special equipment for tunnel mechanization as well as underground space development. At present, the company has received orders for 1,200 shield machines, and more than 1,000 have rolled off the production line. As the company's market share in China has remained the first for eight consecutive years, it also set the record of the largest production and sales in 2017, 2018, and 2019. The company's products are sold to 22 countries and regions.
It is the world's largest concentrated solar power plant with 510 megawatts. The estimated cost of the total project is approximately $2.5 billion. The auxiliary diesel fuel system is used to maintain minimum temperatures of the heat transfer fluid when the sun is not shining, including at night, to start the start and synchronize the turbine to the power grid and for other ancillary functions. The facility allows nighttime electricity generation by storing solar energy in the form of heated molten salt. Phase 1 comes with a full load of molten salt storage capacity of 3 hours. Morocco, which is one of the most ambitious energy targets in the world, is on its way to becoming the world leader in renewable energies. The plant is located in southern Morocco, near the old fortified town of Aid Ben Hadou, near Warzazi. Construction of the canal lasted from 1859 to 1869. The canal was officially opened on November 17, 1869. It offers ships a direct route between the North Atlantic and North Indian Oceans via the Mediterranean and Red Seas, avoiding the South Atlantic and South Indian Oceans. The canal was the property of the Egyptian government, but European shareholders, mostly British and French, owned the chartered company that operated the canal until the event that led to the October-November Suez Crisis in July 1956, when President Gamal Abdel Nasser nationalized the canal. The Egyptian government began construction in 2014 to widen and widen the Bala Bypass by 35 kilometers 22 miles, to speed up the passage of the canal. The expansion was intended to nearly double the capacity of the Suez Canal from 49 to 97 ships per day. This project, which cost LE 59.4 billion, 9 billion US dollars, was financed exclusively by interest-bearing investment certificates issued to Egyptian organizations and individuals. The Suez Canal Authority officially opened the new side canal in 2016. Located on the northern side of the eastern extension of the Suez Canal, this side channel serves the eastern terminal for vessels to berth and berth from the terminal. The Suez Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea, creating the shortest shipping route from Europe to Asia. It was completed in 1869 and has become one of the busiest sea routes in the world. Its construction has been a boon to the shipping industry in terms of shorter transport times and cost savings. The Middle East and North Africa are notorious for severe water scarcity. The lack of water resources of the region is the result of many factors such as harsh climate, intense temperature, high evaporation rates, and increased population growth. Libya is no exception in this regard. Libya has no natural water reserves like rivers and is therefore heavily dependent on groundwater aquifers. Given the increasing impact of climate change, it will be extremely difficult for the country to continue to rely solely on natural resources for water supplies. It led to the overexploitation of natural resources, which the former Libyan regime under Muammar Gaddafi justified by propagating about the abundance of resources, arguing that the country's groundwater aquifers would provide a permanent source of water in the future. The total cost of the project is estimated at $25 billion. The fossil aquifer from which this water is supplied is the Nubian sandstone aquifer system. It was accumulated during the last ice age and is currently not being renewed. The water could last for a thousand years if the 2007 recovery rates are not increased. Other estimates suggest that the water in the aquifer could be depleted within 60 to 100 years.
The primary purpose of the dam is electricity generation to address Ethiopia's acute energy shortage and export electricity to neighboring countries. With a planned installed capacity of 5.15 gigawatts, the dam was among the 20 largest hydroelectric power plants in Africa and the world when completed. The first phase of filling the reservoir began in July 2020, and in August 2020 the water level rose to 540 meters, 40 meters above the bottom of the river at 500 meters above sea level. The dam was originally called Project X and was renamed the Millennium Dam after its contract was announced. On April 15, 2011, the cabinet changed its name to the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Ethiopia has about 45 gigawatts of hydroelectric potential. zero level of the main dam, ground level, will be approximately 500 meters, 1,600 feet, above sea level, roughly corresponding to the level of the Blue Nile Riverbed. From ground level, the main gravity dam will be 145 meters, 476 feet, high, 1,780 meters, 5,840 feet, long, and will consist of roller compacted concrete. The top of the dam will be 655 meters, 2,149 feet, above sea level. The outlets of the two powerhouses are below ground level, so the total height of the dam will be slightly higher than the given height of the dam. In some publications, the main contractor building the dam suggests a number of 170 meters, 560 feet, for the dam height. There will be three spillways in the dams. All use about 18,000 cubic meters of concrete. The construction of the 159-mile road was completed in sections and contained massive amounts of cut and fill sand. 130 million cubic meters of sand transported to build the bridge, the equivalent of 26 giant pyramids. Hundreds of drivers, excavator operators, technicians, and auxiliary workers, about 600 in total, were employed in the three-year project. They lived in strategically designed self-contained camps with facilities to support this unique development. The road has been successfully completed and will establish a vital link between the two Arabian Peninsula neighbors. The direct route through the desert will have a huge beneficial impact for people and businesses traveling between Saudi Arabia and Oman as it will significantly reduce travel times. It has launched the first solar project under the Kingdom's ambitious Vision 2030 program, which will lay the groundwork for Saudi Arabia's renewable plans. With the construction started in November 2018 and the panel starting to generate electricity in November 2019, the project development progressed rapidly. Under the tender rules, Saudi Arabia's first large-scale PV plant came with a 30% quota of locally produced PV components. Solar energy can be used for both residential and commercial sectors. Large-scale solar projects help provide clean energy to thousands of consumers. The National Center for Land Cover Development and Combating Desertification plans to establish 100 protected national parks and plant 50 million trees in five years. 
Under the Saudi Green Initiative, Saudi Arabia aims to protect its natural heritage by promoting climate action at home and abroad. The green spaces surrounding the desert benefit in part from water that was trapped during the last ice age. Saudi Arabia pierces the desert floor to reach these underground rivers and lakes and irrigate the fields directly with a circular sprinkler system. This technique is called center axis irrigation. The water here is a non-renewable resource as precipitation in this region is now only a few centimeters, about an inch, each year. While no one knows how much water is under the desert, hydrologists estimate that pumping the water will only be economical for about 50 years. A 1,200 kilometers railway infrastructure project under construction, the railway line runs from the Saudi border via the UAE to Fujairah on the Indian Ocean coast. The rail network will connect the UAE with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, and Oman and is expected to be ready by 2024. The new railway project is expected to be a sustainable and efficient alternative for freight and passenger transport in urban and rural areas of the Emirate. It is expected to serve approximately 16 million passengers and 50 million tons of cargo. The construction of the Etihad Rail is divided into Phase 1 and Phase 2. Phase 1 was completed in 2016 and Phase 2 is currently under construction. Construction of more than 70% of Phase 2 of the rail network has been completed. The Line is a human-centered futuristic city concept created by NEOM in Saudi Arabia and was published on January 2021 by Prince and Chairman of the NEOM Board of Directors Mohammed bin Salman as part of Saudi Arabia's 2030 Vision Plan. The project was designed for approximately 9 million inhabitants and built a footprint of 170 kilometers. Mohammed bin Salman, as chairman of the NEOM Board of Directors, the designs revealed today for the city's vertically layered communities will challenge the traditional flat, horizontal cities and create a model for nature preservation and enhanced human livability. The line will tackle humanity's challenges in urban life today and will shine a light on alternative ways to live. Submarine or submarine cables are fiber optic cables that connect countries around the world via cables laid on the ocean floor. 
These cables, often thousands of kilometers long, can quickly transmit large amounts of data from one point to another. A submarine cable is a fiber optic cable laid in the ocean that connects two or more landing points. Cables are laid using vessels specially modified for this purpose, carrying the wet plant infrastructure to the seafloor and laying it slowly. These special ships can carry thousands of kilometers of optical cables to the open seas. A special submarine plow is also used to trough and bury submarine cables along the seabed near shorelines where marine activities such as mooring and fishing are most common and can damage submarine cables. These ships grip giant reels of cable before they are slowly and precisely unrolled and laid on the ocean floor. When cables begin to approach land, they are often buried in trenches created by submarine plows to protect the cables from damage. Steel wire rope is widely used in many industries such as mine, metallurgy, mechanical, elevator, harbor, marine fishing, petroleum, boat and ships bridge, tourism and military industry, etc. PC steel strand is widely used in numerous engineering fields such as highway, high-speed railway, mine and all kinds of power station. There are many types of special steel wire rope, PC steel strand, steel wire for galvanized and spring steel wire such as triangle stock, compacted stock, multi-wire composite line contact, multi-layer stock, etc. The product specifications here are complete and with strong comprehensive supporting services. Most of the steel wires used in wire rope making are produced from unalloyed carbon steel, usually with a carbon content of between 0.4% and 0.95%. Rope wires can support large tensile forces as they have a very high strength. They can also run over pulleys even if their diameter is relatively small. Cross-ply wires have several layers where the wires cross each other. Parallel wires are widely used. Here, practically all wire layers have equal measurements of the laying length. The wires of any two overlapping layers are also parallel. This ensures linear contact. But the two inner layer wires support the outer layer wire. Along the entire length of the wire, these wires are adjacent. Parallel laid ropes are produced in a single operation. Pipe laying is the process by which long sections of pipe are installed and aligned so that they can be welded together. Pipelines may be put in above ground, below ground, and underwater. This process is typically performed by professional construction workers who are specifically trained to lay pipe. Underground pipes are usually installed in square trenches. The width and depth of the trench will often depend on the size of the pipe. Pipes are selected according to the material they will carry and can be made of steel or iron. After the pipe is placed in the trench, it is usually covered with a certain amount of backfill material. The trench can be filled to half the pipe height or the pipe can be completely sealed. Loose topsoil, sand, gravel, and fine stone may contain the backfill mix used to cover the pipe. Open trench pipe laying is the most common method, suitable for all pipe diameters. 
To begin with, a trench is dug along the planned pipeline route. If the in-situ soil does not offer a suitable pipe bed, the trench is deepened and stratified. The pipes can then be lowered into the trench as a welded pipe string. Pipe laying underwater is generally much more difficult than that done above ground. This type of construction involves highly trained contractors and specialized equipment. Underwater pipelines may be located many miles beneath the surface of the water and must withstand water pressure, extreme temperature differences, and decay resulting from interaction with sea plant life. Those that perform the actual pipe laying are often trained in diving techniques and make use of hydraulic equipment to complete the task. Pipes are carried out to sea on pipe laying vessels specifically designed for the purpose. These ships are constructed to load and store large underwater pipes and the equipment necessary to lower them to the ocean floor. Pipes are typically carefully inspected throughout the loading and transportation process to ensure no damage occurs prior to their installation. Underwater pipelines undergo degradation over time due to the extreme conditions in which they are located. They require regular repair and replacement to ensure adequate transportation of materials. When this type of pipeline is not serviced regularly, it can result in a complete failure of the pipe system and a loss of the materials being transported. An oil spill that occurs offshore is an example of pipe failure in an underwater system. It is extraordinary to watch the construction of this bridge, which is one of the big projects. Thanks to the highly developed technology, this bridge, which was built with giant machines, has made road transportation very easy. Thanks to the highly advanced tools, it is possible to be more comfortable at the construction sites. Thanks to this technique, workers can do their work faster. Look at the advanced train track machines, they are truly incredible. You will enjoy watching.
It gives excellent results in many different uses where effective heat and sound insulation is aimed and high humidity and mold resistance is required. With one box of spray insulation foam, an area of up to 3 square meters with a thickness of 1.5 centimeters can be insulated. Expanded polystyrene 35 density, made in molds personally by the masters of Thermodon, meets all the requirements of Ghost. It does not use harmful resins and flame retardants are added for fire safety. The dense edge of the foam acts as a guarantee of high moisture resistance and long-term operation of the panels. Also, unlike many foam manufacturers, we do not underestimate the specific gravity of the material, we check the tensile strength and linear strain index. This is the key to the high performance of our panels. In contrast, white block is vulnerable to UV radiation deterioration and must be covered soon after construction to prevent UV radiation and mechanical damage. We offer our customers an extensive portfolio of molds for staircases and platforms. We can customize the design and production conditions to suit the given project requirements. The molds can be supplied as an individual mold or as battery molds, with the option of concreting vertically or horizontally with fixed or adjustable sizes. When inspecting a wood structure, you may notice that the most critical components are the connections. In fact, the study of fastening systems requires a deep knowledge of the mechanical properties of different structural components. It is important to determine the correct resistance mechanism and to control the deformations created by the interaction between the different elements. Joints between wooden elements must provide static resistance and reliability in fire conditions while providing optimum aesthetic results. Thermoflex, a parking deck expansion joint system, consists of extruded thermoplastic rubber sealing glands with perforated flanges embedded in a high-strength, flexible, impact-absorbing elastomeric concrete nose material, Imcrete. Makes the transitions not only practical, but also waterproof. The Adiset resin bound surfacing system provides a contemporary, attractive, porous slash semi porous surface. The finished surface is a seamless bound paving system that is flexible and resistant to cracking. Whether permanently elastic, permanently plastic or fire retardant, Pipe Life offers a variety of sealing compounds to choose from according to your needs. Our product range is complemented by important fire protection accessories and a special foam with a density of up to 1.0 bar. For small projects around the home and garage, you may need to remove rust, paint or abrasive materials before completing the task at hand. When it comes to cars, tractors and boats, professional sandblasting of equipment at an auto or body shop is an option, but it often comes with a hefty price tag. Building a road in the desert involves a number of extraordinary engineering skills. Every step, from planning to execution, requires great attention to detail and innovation. Building roads in the desert requires special techniques and materials to ensure durability and stability in the face of harsh conditions. For example, the road can be constructed using materials that minimize heat absorption and reduce the risk of deformation from extreme temperatures.
Keeping a desert road in top condition is no easy task. Regular inspections are carried out to identify potential problems such as erosion, cracks or sand buildup. Advanced technologies such as remote sensors and drones can be used to monitor the condition of the road and detect any signs of damage. Regular clearing of sand and debris keeps the road safe and accessible to passengers. The River Project is an ambitious initiative focused on restoring and revitalizing a particular river system. You see, rivers are not only vital sources of fresh water, they also support diverse ecosystems and play a very important role in our environment. Unfortunately, many rivers around the world face numerous challenges including pollution, habitat destruction, and water scarcity. This is where River Project comes in. The primary objective of the river project is to rehabilitate the selected river and its surrounding ecosystem. This includes a multifaceted approach, including environmental protection, water management, and community engagement. The project brings together scientists, ecologists, environmentalists, and local communities to work hand in hand with the common goal of improving the health of the river. One of the key aspects of the river project is to implement measures to reduce pollution and improve water quality. This could include upgrading wastewater treatment plants, imposing stricter regulations for industrial waste discharge, and raising awareness of responsible water use. The project aims to create a healthier and more sustainable river environment by addressing the sources of pollution. Additionally, the river project focuses on habitat restoration and conservation. This can include activities such as planting native vegetation along riverbanks, eliminating invasive species, and creating artificial habitats for aquatic wildlife. The river project often spans several years or even decades as it involves a combination of scientific research, policy changes, and community involvement. But every little step counts and the positive impact can be seen and appreciated along the way. Let's talk about the purpose of a well digging machine. These machines are specially designed for digging the ground and creating wells that serve as a valuable source of water for various purposes such as drinking, irrigation, or industrial use. They play a crucial role in ensuring water availability in both rural and urban areas. The heart of the rig is the drilling rig or auger system. This is where the magic happens. The drill rig consists of a series of interconnected drill pipes or augers rotated by the engine of the machine. As the augers turn, they gradually dig into the ground, creating a hole or well. To ensure efficient digging, the drill rig may contain various types of cutting tools or drill bits, depending on soil conditions. For example, a wide cutting bit can be used in loose soil, while a more robust cutting tool is used in harder or rocky terrain.
It relies on an extraordinary engine, a true powerhouse, to power this enormous machine. This massive engine generates a tremendous amount of torque, providing the force needed to turn the drill rig and penetrate the earth. This is a testament to engineering genius and raw power. It revolutionizes industries such as oil exploration, water supply, and geothermal energy, bringing previously inaccessible resources to human use. A aim changer that opens up new possibilities and drives innovation in the excavation field. In today's world, technology has developed a lot. That's why there are so many giant projects. The engineers went crazy. Besides the best engineering marvels, you can also see giant machines. You will fall in love while watching these viral videos. You can also find a lot of new stuff. If you want more such videos to come, you can support us by liking this video. So let's start. ambitious engineering projects the world has ever seen, is one of the largest artificial islands in the world, built with only sand and rock. These palm-shaped islands are so large that they can even be seen from space. materials to blend in with its surroundings and is made of 94 million cubic meters of sand. Protecting this island, which is made of sand, from the sea, is a wave breaker made of 5.5 million cubic meters of rock that surrounds the island. The sum of the sands and rocks used is enough to build a 2.5 meter wall around the earth. For this sea defense surrounding the island, enough rock was used to build two Egyptian pyramids, that is, exactly 5.5 million cubic meters. Dubai is the most commercially viable area in the world, and the construction of the Dubai Opera House in this area will add even more color to this still thriving business hub. This grand opera will have a capacity of 2,000 people and can also be used as a multi-format theater. For art lovers, this opera house will offer a wide range of entertainment and cultural activities such as theaters, concerts, ballet performances, art exhibitions, films, musicals, recitals, sporting events and other similar programs. Also, in addition to this building, a modern arts museum, two art hotels, design studios and galleries will be the icing of a delicious cake Dubai. The 
construction of Burj Khalifa, the largest building in the world, started on January 6, 2004. The building, whose exterior was completed on October 1, 2009, was developed by the real estate company Amar Properties. Architected by George J. F. Stathew, Marshall Strabala, and Adrian Smith, the building's chief structural engineer is Bill Baker. When we look at the contractor companies that built the building, we see Turner Construction, Laing O'Rourke and Samsung C&T Corporation. In other words, we can say that Samsung, one of the most famous smartphone manufacturers in the world, also built the world's tallest building. city with the tallest buildings in the world. But Dubai is not as tall a city as you might think. Yes, it has the most flamboyant megastructures in the world, but it's not as tall a city as Hong Kong or New York. There are 1,344 skyscrapers in total in Dubai, while Hong Kong has 6,606 and New York has 6,180 skyscrapers. Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, is also in Dubai. But the world's tallest residence is in New York, not Dubai. Dubai, which had the world's tallest residence with the 413-meter Princess Tower until 2014, lost this title to New York's 432 Park Avenue building at a height of 426 meters as of 2014.